Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or The Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. The recording has started. Hello, kids, and welcome back to another episode of Marvel Tales in the 31st Century. <laughs> I am Phil. Join me, as always, it is he who knows all. It is Star Owl himself. Yes. Just in the owl. And he joined people who have video can see my little kitty cat. I've got my little kitty cat, Cibole, joining me tonight in my office. So she might make an appearance on the campus. We're going to talk some Guardians of the Galaxy. That's right, kids. We're going to talk some Guardians of the Galaxy. The first four issues from 1990. Yeah. 1990, yeah. Now, did you collect this when it came out, Phil? Not really. Um, most of what I have, which isn't even a full collection, I've gotten through mostly through back issues. But, I mean, mm-hmm. even still, I still feel like this is like my favorite version of the guardians of the galaxy mm. it is for me actually too yeah yeah and i i did collect this when it came out because i i was really unfamiliar with the guardians mm. i think i had maybe one appearance of them which was from a team up with i think maybe spider-man or something oh yeah they weren't a marvel team up yet yeah but that was it and i was always intrigued by them i thought that they were really they looked cool and i liked i really liked the concept so I remember when this series was announced, I was really excited, and I picked up the first issue, and I was hooked right away. I said, this is amazing. I love this. And I collected this pretty much regularly up until maybe issue 25 or like in the 30s or so and fell off it. And then afterwards, I went back and, and got a few more back issues. But I'm still missing a chunk of the issues of this series towards the end of it because it didn't have a really high print run. No, yeah. A lot of them at that and era. So, yeah. Towards yeah, the end, they didn't have high print runs. I think it was maybe the last 15 or so issues I'm still missing. So mm-hmm. one of these days, I'll, I'm going to get around to getting those finally. But yeah, I love this series, and I love these characters. I loved the journeys that all of them took individually and as a team throughout the course of this series. It's it's so cool. And also, I love I loved the fact that the new warriors had just started, like Ooh, just before this. Yeah. So we had two new team books that were very different, and yet both of them kind of had the same version of this, or different versions, I should say, of the same character, Van Sastro. And I thought that that was really cool, too. I thought, wow, that's great. We've got like, one version as a kid and one like from an alternate future. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. You know what? I was thinking about this, and I'm about to blow your mind. All right. Well, you think about this because, yeah, because, again, this Vance Astro grew up, became an astronaut, went into space, you know, basically hibernation for a mm-hmm. thousand years. But at some point, I think it was, was it in a Marvel two in one, basically comes back and convinces his young somehow his young self doesn't become an astronaut instead becomes Marvel Boy, the new warriors. Yeah. So right. was the timeline that eventually becomes this Guardians of the Galaxy, the original Marvel timeline, you know, that Stan oh, and all yeah. started, but then once we hit that Marvel two in one issue, now we've skewed the regular That's Marvel universe has split. skewed off. Yeah. yeah. So so this may be the original timeline, you know. Yeah. It could be. Absolutely. I was just looking I at love it. that. Yeah. Yeah. Th- yeah. Th- I mean, again, the whole Vance Astro thing. Is, oh, we just have to do a whole Va- Vance Astro month at some point. Just be like. <laughs> we should. Two, two weeks of New Warriors. Two weeks new of like, Guardians of the Guardians. Galaxy. Yeah. yeah. Totally. But like I said, I think, uh, I think that might have been a Marvel 2 in 1 where they, they uh, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> That was the cat scratching at the door. Let me out. All right. Uh, all right. Ready to get into these? Yes. All right. So, yes. Guardians of the Galaxy, number one, from uh, June 1990. The title, what are they ready for? Dot, dot, dot. Taser face. <laughs> Taser face. <laughs> That's right, folks. This is the intro. 
I love how it's like it sounds like a question, but it's an exclamation point on there, kids. Uh, writer and penciler Jim Valentino, inker Steve Montano, uh, colorist Evelyn Stein, letterer Ken Lopez, and editor Craig Anderson. So yeah, so writer and penciler Jim Valentino. Yeah. And I hadn't been really familiar with his work either before this, but I thought, wow, what a cool style he has. Oh, yeah. Very unique. Yeah. Very, yeah. Which, again, we would see, like, in that What If issue we covered on Wondercast. Mm, that's right. Uh, so, yeah, so, uh, well, let me open the book here. Yeah, so we kind of jump into the middle of the action here. Yeah. In this first one. Right. They're fighting this sentient machinery. Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, is that a sentient tongue? <laughs> <laughs> and we have all of the basically the the individual introductions of each of the members of the team. Yes, and I love I, I love the, like so many times in these four issues they're like calling fans Astro the thousand year old man, <laughs> thousand year old man. Yeah, you know that suit that covers up from head to toe preserves them. Yeah. Uh, then we get Nikki uh, from Mercury, man. Mercury. That chick is hot. <laughs> Don't get too close. She'll burn you. You know, I know. That's Charlie 27. <laughs> I don't know. How do you feel? I mean, you like, so you, you do like Starhawk? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I love Starhawk. I loved um, the concept that him and Alita were kind of bonded together. Mm-hmm. And one could be out at the same t- at at one point in time, but the other one had to be in like this limbo dimension. And they had different powers. Mm. I really liked that because her powers are kind of like a Green Lantern almost. Yeah, she can like sh- shape sh- uh, shape things out of light constructs. Whereas he he was more like super fast and can fire energy bolts and had this omniscient. Like this, this precognitive vision where he could see things. Yeah, I really liked that. I thought that it was a cool concept for a character. Oh yeah, and then yeah, Charlie Twenty Seven, uh, last survivor of Earth's Jupiter colony. Genetically Jupiter, en- yeah. Genetically engineered to withstand eleven times the gravity of Earth. <laughs> uh, yeah. Martin X, uh, looks like a diamond guy, but yeah, silicone cell master of thermal energy. Uh, sole survivor of Earth's colony on Pluto. Like I said, Nikki's from Mercury. Her head's on fire. <laughs> and again, then, then we get we also get a uh, different version than you may be familiar with of Yondu uh, kids. Yes, yeah. If you're only familiar with the Guardians of the Galaxy films, then this version of Yondu is very different. Yeah, because he he's of... almost like I would equate him to be like kind of like a Native American yes. warrior almost. Yeah, yeah. like very. Very, he has a very strict code of honor. Very spiritual. Very spiritual. Yeah. I mean, the only thing he really, the only things he really has in common with the film version is like kind of his appearance, and the, you know he can whistle and control that arrow. Yeah. The ability. Yeah. But in spirit, the character is so different. Oh yeah. So different. Yeah. Like we said, Starhawk and Alita, Vance Astro, his psychokinetic blast. Psychokinetic blast, yeah, and Martin X. Yes, yeah. So yeah, like you said, they're attacked by the sentient, sentient machinery, which they destroy, and then and oh, and also, kids, we're gonna get a uh, yes, get, introduce you to a different version of Taser Face. Yes, <laughs> this is the first appearance of Taser Face. That's right. I hope that Jim Valentino got some money from. Taser face being used in the Guardians of the Galaxy film. Probably not. Because I, I think he created the character. Oh, yeah. I, I would assume. I, yeah, I don't think... It's, I don't know if Taser face has appeared anywhere else. <laughs> I don't think so. That that, yeah. that sounds like a 90s name to me, so I must... Totally. Well, he, he, well, even later he becomes... He changes and becomes an even more 90s character. Overkill. Uh... <laughs> Taser face to overkill. Yeah, it happened, folks. I was trying to find a link for him here so he could give me his first appearance. Uh, antagonist. Oh, Field Unit 17 Taser face. All right. Uh, oh, this is his first appearance. So, yeah. So, yeah, Valentino created him. Nice. Yeah, I hope he got some money for that from the movie. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't know if any of them ever get any money from the movies. I think yeah. they just get the uh, old. Oh, say, okay, yeah. oh, thanks in the in the uh, credits. So yeah, we get that teaser. <laughs> uh, cape and all. Mm. Oh, but then the, yes, these aliens are all afraid of Yondu because again they were attacked by. Well, they saw this another blue person, so they're like, hmm. Mm. But that's impossible. Yondu, is which is a yeah. yeah. Is he the last, though? Ooh, it's a mystery we'll set up for later. I liked this, too, because um, right off the bat, as we see, there's all these subplots that Jim Valentino put in, uh, which continue throughout the course of this series. There's all these cool little subplots of menacing characters scheming in the shadows or some ancient marvel legacy coming into play yes. a oh, place yeah. that you a place that you might not have expected it to, to appear like ghost rider or the phoenix or something it was so cool i love it i love this series or what we're gonna get an issue too <laughs> <laughs> right yeah uh oh I, I do like the little uh summary in the beginning i guess uh, you know if you're not familiar with the guardians and talking about mm. like, their first appearance and stuff i mean oh god but those costumes but especially yes. charlie 27 <laughs> yes i know have you have you read any of that early guardians oh, of the galaxy stuff? i think i may have read some of those once it's been such a long time i i've got a couple of yeah i think i read them in reprint somewhere maybe maybe it was on the app i can't remember yeah i've got a couple of great um i picked these up for cheap years ago these mm. are a couple of hardcovers um, one's called Earth Shall Overcome, this one. Oh, nice. Which uh, reprints the very early stuff. And then there's another volume called The Power of Starhawk, this one, which um, has some of the later appearances of the team. Nice. And, yeah, those are some of my favorite little things there. I love those. Um, but yeah, if you ever get a chance to, or maybe we should, we could actually cover it on the show any any time. Oh yeah, yeah. Some of that early that that sixties Guardians of the Galaxy stuff is just so cool. Heck yeah, it's way out there too. It's very bizarre. But yeah, they give like all the like their early appearances and their team up with like Captain America and Ben Grimm and then the Defenders, ben Grimm, the Defenders, which is one that kind of met um, Starhawk, uh, and then. First, Thor comes to the future to help them with Korvac, and then, yeah, like, then we see that classic. <laughs> they come back to the past. Which yeah. I, I believe we're going to cover, so yeah. Yes. Korvac, yeah. Next year on Marvel Tales, yeah. we're going to have a whole month of Korvac. Actually, it might be longer than that, I think, if I remember right. I'm trying might be to closer remember. to two months. Yeah. But then they talk about, yeah, their team up with Spider-Man. That was a Marvel Tale, or team up, I remember mm. that. We've got Marvel and team up, yeah. Adam, Adam Warlock. Yes. Oh God, Adam Warlock and Starhawk in the same room. I can smell the smug already. Oh man, I can cut through that those egos, oh, and then, then uh, the meeting of the two Vance Astrovics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, because he wanted to, you know, old Vance wanted to change his destiny, but of course he did it. He mm -hmm. only woke the boys late in psychokinesis and created an alternate reality. I love the plug. You can see the other version but, uh, as Marvel Boy and New Warriors every month. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, they talk about that. And then, yeah, they mention how the, the quest we're going to go on here for Captain America's shield. Mm. Mm -hmm. That becomes the very oh, yeah. focal point of the Guardians of the Galaxy's activities for a while. Yeah, that's the thing. I want to I do some more of this eventually. Yeah, get to the point where, mm. you know, spoilers where Vance gets Captain America's shield. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and we may even have an appearance later on of a certain uh, monarch of Latveria. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could incorporate that into a future Doomsember. Oh, yeah. Some gu Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm going to look at that list. I'll be like, okay, the Ben Sinister, Mark, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, we might have to fit some more in this in the in December. <laughs> uh. Uh. So yeah, a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of this issue is just you know basically telling you who the guardians are and setting stuff. But you know, here's the quest we're going to be going on, and then they get attacked by Taserface. Uh, yeah, again, blast eight of uh, blast fans. The blast is as swift as it is powerful, and this one thousand year old man is sent sprawling. <laughs> <laughs> Much to the shock of his teammates. That's right. Yeah, he takes him down. Takes on Charlie Twenty Seven, and Yondu hits. Try to get some of that arrow. 
Mickey blasts him from behind. Yeah, I like that it wasn't an easy fight here. Yeah. Like, he actually waded in and did some damage to this team without them just kind of shrugging it off and be like, oh, who's this armored loser named Taserface? Yeah. But he even takes down Starhawk yeah, with his, uh, yeah. his face blast. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not just a clever nickname, kids. Yeah, he right. literally can blast from his face. Yeah. Yeah, there's a reason why I am called Taserface. A beam of ele- deadly electromagnetic energy emits from the alien's face, and the one who knows is sent reeling the brunt of its force then they use some cool teamwork and lay him out martin x covers his uh head with some ice so he can't breathe and then vance astro hits him with the psychokinetic whammy yep yep uh, but then he yeah, has people are coming for him uh because yeah the guardians are talking at the end they're basically talking about yeah they need to discern who their adversary is and all this and uh but yeah the, they're the other people show up uh Oh, but first, of course, Vance, they're like, his armor, his blasters, rumble, he reminds me of Iron Man. <laughs> yes, there's a strange pattern here. Yes, but then, yes, his people show up at the end and say, yes, they're members of the Stark. Mm. Cliffhanger ending. All right, so yeah, so what do you think, Justin? Uh, I love this. I was hooked right from the beginning. Oh, yeah. In 1990, and still reading it now, 34 years later, it still holds up. Oh, it's yeah. a really entertaining little comic book. I mean, Jim Valentino's art still looks good. Mm-hmm. The The script still flows really well. And I liked how we got the history of the Guardians of the Galaxy without that being the entire first issue. Yeah. Like, they didn't have it be, like, half the issue of just... By the way, this is what these characters are doing. Because because luckily they hadn't had enough appearances then. Mm-hmm. They had appeared sparsely enough so that you could cover all of their history in three or four or five pages rather than a whole issue. And I liked that. I liked that. Because they could have gone they could have gone real into depth oh, with the yeah. stuff that they did and had it overwhelm the entire first issue. But I'm I'm it was a smart decision to keep it succinct like they did and just give it the highlights reel. I really liked that. And we have a new villain who, I mean, yeah, he's got a really super corny name, but I mean, the design was pretty cool. Like he, like I said, he actually did some damage to the team in the onset without, you know, they had to use some really um, specific teamwork to defeat him. And then we have a great cliffhanger ending. At the end of it all. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you think, Phil, the first oh, time that you read yeah. this? Were oh, you like, yeah. wow, yeah. this is awesome? Yeah. I remember, yeah. yeah, I'm like, I want to read some Guardians of the Galaxy. And yeah, once I cracked this series, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm hooked. You know, I wish I'd nice. read it sooner. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. All right. Should we get to number two? Yeah. All right. Guardians of the Galaxy, number two from July 1990. The Stark Truth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, again, writer Pensler, Jim Valentino, inker Steve Montano, colorist Evelyn Stein, letter Ken Lopez, editor Craig Anderson. All right, so, so yeah, this one, yeah, this one's right where they ended. Yeah, they're them facing off with the Stark, these aliens with uh, yes, Iron Man technology. I love when that get with that one get you know starts getting a fist fight with Charlie twenty seven. He tells him, yeah. I am a Stark, ugly one, <laughs> ugly one. Yeah. So yeah, they all start battling it out uh yeah i love that we have this massive battle right at the onset of this issue hmm. yeah this is tremendous and the guardians are on the defensive oh, pretty yeah. much the whole thing like they are utterly overwhelmed by this armored alien force that's taking the fight right to them well yeah especially once they uh basically blast a hole in vance's containment suit Mm. Yeah, the dude with the blade blades on his arm yeah. slices a hole right th- right through his suit, so his flesh automatically starts to decay and disintegrate. So they're and, like, "Yeah, Martin, next, get over here, free up, free up." Yeah, <laughs> put some ice on this stat. But then Yondu gets laid out right after yep. that happened. Another big giant armored Stark dude comes up behind him and knocks him into a building. Yep, that's going to come back there. Yeah. 
Oh, but then we uh, f- we switch to uh, yes, the the, th- the current protector of the universe, Fire Lord. Fire Lord, and the last survivor of Xandar. Apparently, yeah. Xandar is gone at this point. Yeah, and they mentioned the mysterious disappearance of the Silver Surfer. Mm-hmm. But spoilers, we will see him later. And then I love for like. Uh, for the origin of the Stark, we basically just switched to a what if issue because you want to just shows up and it's just like, okay, oh, here's, here's, yeah, yeah, here's what you need to know about the Stark. Yeah. I'm like, is he standing here t- in a vacuum talking to himself? Yeah, I mean, basically, unless, unless he's just recording his notes or whatever. I don't know. I figured that's all he did was just talk to himself. Uh, so yeah, so basically, yeah, in this reality, on uh, in the uh, 21st century, what was it, uh, Mars attacked and the superheroes fought back and for some reason Tony Stark shot all his all his technology into space trying to keep it out of Martian hands cuz he yeah. you know he was defeated i guess so but i'm like why yeah, would all, you all of them were why yeah. would you shoot it into deep space i mean if you're at that's if you're shooting it into space why don't you just shoot it into the sun right cuz i mean i'm yeah. i don't think it's making a return trip back to him so it's like if you're getting rid of this permanently just shoot it into the sun yeah Maybe that's what he was intending to do, and he overshot yeah. it. Or is there some way to, <laughs> or is there some way to melt it down on Earth? I don't know. Yeah, you would think. Yeah, or send it in the core of the planet or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they're self-destruct something. Yeah, that seems silly. Oh, was oh god, there was a story during the Denny O'Neill era. I think they dumped the suits in the in the ocean, or I mean, again, the, maybe the Martians could get that, but mm. something. Yeah. But yes, but basically, yeah, but this. Uh, Rocket used the sun as a slingshot, uh, but it's Tony's calculations were off. This thing landed on a planet eventually, and mm-hmm. these primitive people eventually got up the nerve to uh, break into this uh, shuttle, finds all Tony's technology, and basically, yeah, start start building up their world, and it basically affects their whole society. <laughs> and they worship him as a god, like they've got a giant statue built of him. They they name themselves after him, and so it's interesting too. This is matriarchal society as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked that twist on it. Oh yeah, but yeah, basically, yeah, the whole, the whole they basically ruined the planet. They basically just you know <laughs> the pollution from from their factories and foundries the, and all their yeah all the machines and stuff. The pollution just, yeah. and just like strip mining the entire planet. Yeah, because it says they don't even go outside anymore. Every building is like connected by tunnels and stuff. And, yeah. Oh, you know what else we got to cover? Iron Man 280. Uh, when Tony gets yanked to the future. Yeah. He, he... Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. But yeah, you want to. I, I had the privilege to know Anthony Stark. Uh, <laughs> he would have wept at the damage he unwittingly brought on this world. Hmm. So, uh, the planet now in its death rose, abused beyond the point of redemption, had nothing left to give. It was then that they used their now advanced technology to create a cast of cyborg scouts. Mm. Taser face there in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so basically they used the cyborgs to go out and they started uh, going after other worlds. Mm hmm. Invade and rob their minerals and enslave their populations. Worlds like Korg, the one that they're on at the onset of this. Yep. So yeah, so Charlie twenty seven seems to notice. Yes, this is a, this is a matriarchal society, and he's, he's like, yeah, even the even like the you know the Stark troops are like they won't like attack Alita, so or, or uh, no Nikki, and they're she's just like, mm. huh, okay. He's like they tell Starhawk to change to uh, switch places with Alita, so yeah. Starhawk goes up and just changes, and she's like, Alita's like, wait a minute, I can't fly. He knows I can't fly. He know he knows I can't fly. Why did he do that? So yes, kids. So yes, basically the Stark are distracted by these these uh, women with the low cut uh, costumes. Yes. Yes. Although yeah. I shouldn't say, I, yeah, it has to be the women because I mean Charlie Twenty Seven boobs are out there for everyone to see. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Those are barely covered up. Yeah. And I love how they say, "Kill it, kill the man, her," because the, the Stark are have no clue what's going on. Yeah. We've never seen somebody transform like that from a man to a woman. And one of the troops goes to, I guess, uh, inform the queen or whatever uh, about a death because Alita accidentally kills one because it Yes, drops Lieutenant from... Dark Eyes has oh. been killed. Yeah, which it... is a huge dishonor, I guess, yes. if you're killed, killed by an alien. 
and it's even worse yeah. for them because it's a woman they, she killed. So, mm-hmm. doubly dishonored. Mm, but the queen's like, oh yeah, then we're gonna kill. She basically says she's gonna kill Alita. Yeah. Oh lord. And Vance is still fighting because his suit's been frozen up by Martin X, but his uh, one arm is par- his right arm is paralyzed. Mm-hmm. He's in excruciating pain. Mm-hmm. And then things go from bad to worse because then Taserface uh, takes Nikki hostage. He says, uh, surrender immediately, aliens, or your leader's life is forfeit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I think she's the leader, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. But that's not even the cliffhanger, kids. The cliffhanger is, yeah, all these, all the Stark troops fire on Alita as she's changing or swapping places in the middle of transformation. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. that last page, we kind of see them all both getting shot, kind of. No. Yeah. That's oh. a great cliffhanger. Oh, yeah. We didn't mention uh, Yondu is about to get his throat slit by that alien. Yes. The aliens here on Korg kind of don't. Well, they, they, they um, believe that Yondu is the same alien that terrorized the planet previously. So they have this kind of the spite against Yondu mm-hmm. and the other aliens. Oh, yeah. That forgot in the first one, but in this one, too. Yeah. Instead of a letters page, it's basically Jim Valentino giving you a hit, the history of the Guardians. Yeah. That was nice, too. Yeah. You had that at the back of the issue, a nice text article that's a more yeah detailed, in-depth analysis. Yeah, I missed it. I missed when they did stuff like that. So, like, even like, was it the first issue of Quasar? There was like an early issue. It might have been two or something. Mm. There was an early mm-hmm. issue of Quasar where Mark Grunewald kind of gave you like a reading list. Like, oh, here's the like Quasar's early appearances and stuff. And and that was great too because he had been around for a while. Oh, he had yeah. been around for at least like I think a decade or more before he got his own series. So he had a bunch of appearances over the years. Oh yeah, and he had disappeared for a bunch of years, so which is why it's it was pretty cool when Grunwald come in and, was, and yeah. said, "Oh, this is why he disappeared for a bunch." You know, this is what he was doing. Right. Yeah, that was cool. He thought of everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but this one, yeah, the suggested reading list: Giant Size Defenders Five and Defenders Twenty Six through Twenty Nine, and Marvel Defense yeah. Three and Four. So, yeah, maybe we could cover those Defenders issues. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. I don't remember much about those. Always down for some Defenders. <laughs> yeah, Defenduary. We could do another Defenduary oh, next nice. year. Oh nice! Yeah. Yeah. All right, ready for uh, number three? Number three, yeah. Vance screaming at Starhawk, Cower! <laughs> As he flies away. Yeah. All right, Guardians of the Galaxy number three from August 1990. <laughs> Split decision. I see what you did there. I yes. see what you did there. Same team. Uh, but yeah, we see Martin X has frozen Nikki and Taserface. Uh, but then the, uh, no, then they hear Alita. So yeah, Tra- Charlie Twenty Seven is basically the field general. He's basically like uh, tells Martin next to set up a wall of fire. Tells Vance to go check on Alita. Then Charlie Twenty Seven just starts picking up giant chunks of rock and whipping them at the start, uh, hurling them. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, we see Vance. Good lord, because yes, there in a crater is laying Alita and Starhawk. Separated. Yep. Yeah. Before Star comes show up, so he gives him a psychokinetic blast. Yeah. Yeah, he may be injured, but he's not defenseless. Yeah, he's like, these two are unconscious. He's like, at least I'm conscious, but... Yeah, and then Starhawk comes to and just abruptly leaves. Yeah, because he tells uh, Vance to take care of Alita, and then he takes off, yeah. Yeah. Flies away. The time is now. I must go. Accept the word of the one who knows. Mm, and then back to Yondu uh, this alien's basically like, he, he looked like he was going to kill him he's like no I can't do it I'm too weak mm. but yeah, he said his brother was killed by uh, another blue one so mm. my brother's killer yeah yep uh, and then we see Fire Lord again flying past this ship uh, with a group uh, we'll see here soon called Force mm. yeah the introduction of Force yes yeah, we'll see a lot of them before too long. Oh, my. A woman named Broadside. Ah, that's unfortunate. Broadside. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, there are some great early 90s na- character names in this series as well. Yeah. Taser face, Broadside. <laughs> broadside. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Photon. So, mm-hmm. 
So the ice is starting to melt on Nikki and Taser face. So yeah, Nikki can breathe again, but uh, Van zaps Taser face again. And then, and then while he's unconscious, Nikki blasts him again. Yep. She's like, well, she's like now I'm all right. It doesn't kill him, but he wake up with every bone in his body in excruciating pain. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Oh, yeah, then we get that almost splash page of Charlie 27. Yeah. Yeah, he's not messing around anymore. I mean, that I mean that early spacesuit was kind of silly. made his head look like a weird shape, but, I mean, it looks like he's... Almost looks like an S and M costume there. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, with the straps and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, except for has having the star pin on there. Is there even a need for that X across his chest? I'm just. Like, I don't think so. I mean, unless it's holding no. his pants up. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Sort of like futuristic suspenders. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, galactic overalls. I think the pants come off next. (laughs) Uh, And then we get to the Stark planet and see the elders arguing about what to do. Yeah. There's another Tony Stark statue. Yeah. It's crazy. They worship him as an idol. You get a lot of Star Trek references in here. Yes, have the fleet go to yellow alert just in case. Yeah. Yellow alert. (sighs) But yeah, the Guardians beam back up to their ship. Oh, and... uh, yeah, Martin X has made uh, Vance a uh, adamantium cast, basically, so he can move his arm. Mm. He's like, we're thinking of redoing my whole costume in this stuff, Charlie 27. Sounds like something you should have done a long time ago. Uh, yeah, well, might be a good idea. I mean, if you have the ability, why not? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they've taken a hostage of the, the, uh, a Stark general. Mm-hmm. And Alita's awake. I know it's 1990, but yes, Alita in that panel played by Pam Anderson. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think Jim Valentina was watching a lot of Baywatch in 1990. Yeah. She's like, where's Starhawk? I can't feel him. You are separated. She's like, where is he? Fans. I'll tell you where he is. The space sludge split on us again. <laughs> space sludge. Uh, yeah. But then, yeah. You know, he's like, uh, Martin X, Charlie, come here. You, you, you need to see this. Because, yes, the Stark show up in their ship, which is much larger. The giant. Yeah, I yes. love that two-page spread of that ship. It's so cool. Basically tell yeah. them they have it's, 60 seconds. It's a very classic Marvel image. Mm. Classic Marvel sci-fi image. It's so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. So they're getting ready to attack. Uh, <clears throat> then we see Starhawk. Hmm. Uh, Hurtling into the void. Yeah. yeah. Sending a flare into deep space to signal someone. Uh, oh, he's, he's trying to get back to the team, but he says, uh, although I don't know why I bother, I never get back in time. <laughs> I wonder why that is. I know. We talked about the cliffhanger. Yes. The, uh, the Guardian ship is blown up by the Stark. Yes. Another cliffhanger ending. <laughs> yep. Uh, and next, and then came Fire Lord. <laughs> Fire Lord. All right. So thoughts on this one? I love it. I love that we had a little glimpse into the Stark world here, mm-hmm. which was cool. You see a little glimpse into their culture, and yeah, it was great. The action didn't really let up um, for very long. The momentum of the story just kept moving on really well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Didn't slow, yeah. These four issues really didn't slow down at all. No, yeah, it's great. Keeps you, keeps the page turning, you know, yeah, keeps you interested in what's going on. Oh, here we go. Yeah, uh, yes, that's right. Marvel Team Up 86 was their team up with Spider Man. Uh... Mm. Yeah, that was my introduction to them, was that issue. Yeah, and I feel like it, it wasn't all of them in that. I feel like it was just, yeah, Starhawk and Nikki and Martin X, maybe. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, they must have teamed up with Thor. Thor annual. Thor annual six. So. Mm. I wonder if that's the Korvac one. I think so. Yeah, they they they're yeah they're kind of solo battle with Thor against Korvac before. Yeah. Mm. I think I think that's before they come back to the present. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's the other one we should do. That uh, uh, what's that? Um, it's a Korvac one, but it was from the like the early nineties. They got uh, that an- the annual crossover. Yes, I added that to our um 
our Corvette coverage next year, mm. the Corvette Quest. That's right. Because yes. it was um, it was Guardians of the Galaxy annual and like fantastic. I think it starts in Fantastic, fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Yeah. yeah. Thor, I think. Thor, I think maybe Silver, Silver Surfer, Surfer too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the Silver, a, I think it's the, four. yeah, because I think the Silver Surfer one is set in the Guardians future because he has the quantum bands mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I added that one to our coverage for Corvac, so nice. that'll be a cool little epilogue to the the main event. All right, ready to get to the last one? Yeah. All right, Guardians number four. Guardians of the Galaxy number four, September nineteen ninety, and then came Fire Lord. <laughs> hey, oh. oh my! Oh my! <laughs> Talk about hot and spicy. <laughs> Muy caliente. Oh my! The writer, penciler, Jim Valentino, inker, Steve Montano, colorist, Evelyn Stein, letterer, Jack Morelli, and editor, Craig Anderson. And yeah, this one. Yeah, look at that opening splash of Fire Lord. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And the two page spread that immediately uh, follows it. Oh, yeah, with Starhawk. Right yeah. after it with Starhawk, galactic stuff. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, every every issue of this series was like a visual feast. Because mm-hmm. you had a, a lot of these glorious single and two double page spreads of this wonderful Jim Valentino artwork. Mm, yeah and then yeah fire yeah fire lord shows up and starts attacking the stark and starhawk kind of stops him he's like no no no, you're needed on the planet yes he knows exactly who he is and he knows where he needs to go because he is the one who knows that's right uh but yes we see the guardians are alive and on the planet Mm -hmm. wow nikki really putting her hips into it when she uses that blaster (laughs) right That is definitely and unreservedly a 1990 pose. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, they're fighting the Stark on this planet, and uh, they beat they beat the Stark. <laughs> we won. Yeah. But then, yeah, no taser face wakes up. I will not allow it. Yeah, Blast Charlie. And, uh... Oh, see, man, they're foreshadowing that shield because Vance is using that adamantium cast to, like, block yes. and stuff. Yeah. Deflect the projectile. Yeah. And then uh, poor Martinex gets blasted in the chest by Taser Face's face blast. Yeah, he's losing shards of himself. Yeah, he's losing my yeah, flesh. A whole, whole bunch of his his outer crystalline skin comes flying off. And then Alita throwing up a shield, putting her hips into it also. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that, oh, and then we have an, another two-page spread. That after is that. so nice. Yeah, with Fire Lord, and then yeah. you get those little mini panels all the, of all the good yeah. Guardians and reactions. Yeah. And Nikki is immediately enamored with him. <laughs> He's gorgeous. <laughs> I guess it would have been too on the nose if she would have been like, oh, he's hot. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that. Motherless Kerr. Yeah. So yeah, but Taser Face is really trying to blast the uh, the Fire Lord. I'll give you one last warning: surrender or die. Mm. Yeah, another splash page when he blasts Taser yes. Face. Yeah. Oh man, the defeat of Taser Face. Harkov's bones. I love Alita. I never expected the Protector of the Universe to be so so bloodthirsty. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bloodthirsty universe. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, because then uh, then we we uh, get back to the to that team force here. Mm. Mm. And here we go. There's our blue person. Uh, was that photon? Photon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Photon broadside eighty five <laughs> brawl scanner tachyon and interface. Yep. And Brawl uh, was around with Corvax Minions of Menace, I think. Hmm. I think he was part of that group. I think he was one of the ones that had been around before. But yeah, this team is also after Cap Shield, aren't they? Mm. Yes. And we have a great revelation here because we see Photon, uh-huh. a full panel of Photon, and she is the same race as Yondu. Yep. Got that big red mohawk. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, then back at the Guardians, I love Starhawk. It's Bex. Came as soon as I was able. Yeah, a day late and a dollar short as usual, Starhawk. <laughs> Says. The battle's over, pal. Thanks to Fire Lord, and no thanks to you. Uh, but he says, uh, Starhawk says he has uh, he has secured the Stark ship. So, mm. they have a new home. That's right. Uh, so yeah, they go up to the ship. Uh, oh yeah, is this Taser? Is this this Taser face or? Yeah, on the ground. Yeah, yeah. He's he's still making alive, his Jason. declarations of vengeance. Yep. The next time we see him, he will undergo another transformation. Treat me like KFC, will you? I'll skit your mama then. <laughs> Extra crispy. Uh. So yeah, the Guardians are checking out their new ship, uh, which is, yeah. of course is bigger, as we saw. So. Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot more room to stretch out. Every, everybody gets their own room now instead of people sharing one. Mm -hmm. And, oh, Bansa offers Fire Lord, uh, yeah, to become part of the team. Mm. <laughs> Nikki, I, we could make you happy, Fire Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she is really enamored with this guy. Fire Lord, yes, Chowd, I'm sure you could. Oh, Chowd, oh. Oh. That's true. He is significantly older. Oh, yes. By a few thousand years. <laughs> yeah, I love, yeah, I love how Vance is like, oh, yeah, I remember you used to pow around with the Avengers. Like, well, how, how often was it? I mean, how long? It wasn't with the Avengers that often. I mean, talk about the time Spider-Man kicked his ass. Oh, yeah. Fire Lord's like, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's a sore subject for me. Please yes. don't bring that. Up. And again, I mean, I brought it up before, but I did find that so interesting when I talked to Ron Friends the one time. He said, yeah, that Fire Lord, that two-parter in Amazing Spider-Man, that was supposed to be in an annual, but yeah. Somehow, an annual, yeah. Yeah, they just threw it in as like a fill-in, like two-parter. See, I would have loved for it to have been the annual and have it be a, a much longer fight. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, the fight that we got was great, but... I feel like that could have been like oh yeah, could an did, annual length. Could have did like a whole 60, 64 page annual from front totally. to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I love that idea. I love I love that story. Yeah, he just puts puts Fire Lord down. <laughs> then the Avengers show up. He's like, "Where were you guys?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're looking at him like, uh, "Are you all right? Do you need to talk to someone?" They're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop beating on him! No, he's gonna kill me now." <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think even Hercules was like uh, simmer down Spider-Man uh, so yeah so Fire Lord said he's not going to be a member but he's basically an honorary member because he takes one of those stars mm. so they can all call he'll be him. on call he'll yeah. be on call if they need him which yeah. is actually really great if you've got somebody like Fire, Fire Lord on call that's oh yeah always an advantage the former Herald of Galactus yeah yeah and current protector of the universe. Mm. Somebody with that much power. Absolutely. And that he does appear again in the series. A few times. So, yeah, basically they tell him about their quest for Cap Shield. But then, last page. Mm -hmm. What did they name the new ship? The Captain America 2. Yeah. Love it. Because, yeah, that was the name of Vance's first ship, I guess. That, but he took the one that was destroyed. Yeah. yeah. Captain yeah. America, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Next issue, a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see more of the mysterious team. Uh, yep. I'm just looking at the... I guess it was still History of the Guardians in this one. Yeah. Yeah, that continued on, and then they... Oh, uh, you know, we got to cover... the letters. You know, we got to cover, you know, we have to uh, force Little Hellfire to do a review of Marvel 2 and 169. Oh, oh, which one's that? Uh, it's, uh bu, 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 well, bu, bu, bu. oh, is this the, was that the one maybe where, uh, uh, oh, it says the final detour made by the Guardians before returning to the future involved the second meeting between Major Vance Astro and his teenage counterpart. Uh, oh, that might be the one where he actually changes the timeline and convinces a month. Oh, an astronaut. Yeah. no kidding. Okay. Boy. Hmm. Oh, so oh, that's uh, that's so ironic, man. He's sixty nine. The timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Try 
Try to change it. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah. You are nothing compared to the 69. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm so tired, kids. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah. So, you, so you, I know you were saying, so this uh, held up. You thought this was just as good as the first time you read it? Oh, definitely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's still entertaining. The art's still oh, great. Yeah. yeah. And this this first story, I mean, for four issues, it, it breezes right by. And it still, yeah, I still, I still think it holds up well. Yeah, thirty-four years later, I you, do. Yeah, even in like the first two issues, like the info dump, it really didn't seem like it wasn't like oh, we're slogging through an info dump again. But no, mm-hmm. it, it kind of worked. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. Yeah, it, you, you, you want to? We did the second one. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's not a yeah. what if issue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which I get. Funny. I guess this whole series is kind of a what if because it's a divergent time mm. in the future. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we're going to get a lot of that as the series continues with some of the things that they do later on. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it definitely has a what if feel to it. And is it around yeah. uh, Infinity War when they go back to the present, like the 20th century? Yes. Yeah. And they get um, the second Yellow Jacket, Rita oh, Kamara. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Group, and she comes back with them to the future. And, and that's great. Her adventures with them are fantastic. They did such great things with her character. It was so cool. And then once at the end of the series, she comes back to the present just to get killed in the crappening. <laughs> yeah, in the crappening. Exactly. Oh, Scroll way down, what kids. Waste. What an absolute waste. But, yeah, the silver lining is that she did get some wonderful, truly wonderful character development. Nice. In the pages of this series later on. And they, they actually did something wonderful with the character of Yellow Jacket. And she was... Yeah, she was a valuable member of the team. She had some great adventures with them. Yeah, it was solid. I yeah, I love that. Yeah, like I said, I read m- most of this through back issues, and like you know, I'll, I'll I get them out of order. So like, yeah, one day I want to sit down and like read these like mm-hmm. through in order. Yeah, because mm-hmm. as good as they were yeah, before. Yeah, I mean, I know reading these first four in order, I was like, oh yeah, this is great. Yeah, there's another story too later on where they I think they go to Asgard. Mm. Or like a different that. version yeah. of Asgard, yeah. And there were some cool things that happened there. Yeah, yeah. This is a great series. Yeah, it would be fun to cover some more of this at some point in the future. And, yeah. And isn't there something with Wolverine skeleton? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being utilized by that certain Latvian dictator that I mentioned. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I said we might have to add some. We might have to add that to December. <laughs> <laughs> man, December. This, man, December is going to be heavy, but no, oh, it's worth it. <laughs> We're going to have a smorgasbord in Doom December. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, I think we, yeah, we covered pretty much all the, the meat and potatoes of these four issues. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, I'd yeah. love to go back to this at some point. Yeah. All right. So, yes, yeah, so that'll wrap up uh, June. So, next month for the start of July, for the episode that will drop on July 4th. Hmm. Mm. What are we going to cover, kids? Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll maybe we'll give you some tales of that great man who who the ship is named after. Uh, yes, yeah, that's the Sentinel cool. of Liberty. That's right. So we yes, ask for your Fourth of July episode. We're going to cover Captain America two fifty five and three eighty three. So mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. Some one and dones. Uh, two fifty five. I don't think I don't think Dima, I don't think Dimatius was there yet. It might have been. Uh, Oh, who was on there before? Oh, was it a Roger Stern? I can't remember. It was some. Well, two, which one? Two fifty five. Two fifty five. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, I think it might have been Roger Stern or or uh, Steve Englehart. Mm, I know Roger Stern did some, a few before that. I just want to make sure. But uh, but yeah, the three eighty three. I know for sure uh, is Grunewald. So yes, mm. that's definitely Grunewald. Yeah. There we go. Cap two fifty five was. Yep, Roger. Oh, Roger Stern writer John Byrne penciler. Yeah. Ooh, that's one of the Byrne ones. Nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Yeah, two fifty five is that. is that one. Yeah. Yes, that one. Yeah. yeah, I love that one. That whole era is is solid gold. Oh, that's what I Roger said. Roger Stern and jo- John Byrne. My God, what a combination! Anyone ask me about cap recommendations, I say. You basically start with Roger Stern, who was like what, like two forty seven or something, and you basically mm-hmm. go through like Mark Wade. I mean, that's like a ten year at least. Yes, it, it's over ten years because I mean, I think what Grunewald did ten years just by himself. So, right, it's like fifteen years, I think at least. Yeah, it's like early. The, yeah, 
maybe closer to 20. It's pretty much like early 80s to like the almost the end of the 90s. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably closer to 20 almost. Yeah. But yeah. I would even include some of the late 70s stuff in there. Yeah. Because I think that's when the. I think that's when the the Roger Stern and John Byrne stuff was. Oh yeah, the late seventies might have even been. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. So yeah, I would I would take that whole. I agree. Yeah, I'd take that whole twenty year block and make that like the essential okay. Captain America reading. Like if you wanted like sure. a continuous, yeah, like uninterrupted, yeah, read this. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'd say that. Yeah. yeah. Like like I said, it's like two forty seven through. Well, at least the end of volume one, and then Mark Wade comes back. After onslaught, right. yeah, heroes reborn yes. to do some more, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we did cover some of those because remember the scrolls, the secret invasion, the yes. scroll issues, yeah, yeah. Those are great. All right, so yeah, so that will be your Fourth of July episode, and then second week of July we'll do Spider Man twenty ninety nine. We're going to come back to yes. that and do issues four Returning through eight. That. Yes, yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, week three will cover uh, the first three issues of Captain Marvel from t- uh, the year 2000 featuring uh, Genus. Yeah, Peter David, right? Yeah, Peter David. That's when uh, yeah. Genus and Rick are just like first steps uh, put together. And that's going to be my first read of that, so I'm doubly excited of that. Oh, you know what? We might uh, might have to get Russell in here because I believe, is it two issues two and three of that, I believe? I believe we uh, call guest star in that, so oh uh-huh. okay uh-huh. we could do a little gamma charge marvel tales crossover i like that idea yeah because there's some hulk in there yeah okay very cool and then uh you've been patiently waiting since last year uh the last week of july we're going to get back to alpha flight alpha flight five through eight yes that was one of our most popular episodes last year oh actually. yeah that might have been that might have um, been the uh at least on youtube i think that was might have been the Marvel Tales that got the most downloads, maybe. So I think you're right. Views, I think you're yeah. Right. It was around three, almost three hundred. So yeah, well, it's it's overdue. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we definitely need to do more Alpha Flight. Yeah. And then August and September, it's all Atlantis attacks every single yes. part. Get ready for two months of Atlantis attacks. It's oh, oh god! Someone's favorite biscuits on that first cover too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And all his glory. Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, he's covered up for most of that story afterwards, but it's all right. That's the whole Marvel Universe. You'll find a biscuit in there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. <clears throat> yes, kids. So send us your thoughts on all of that. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Uh, and again, you can always send your thoughts on this uh, episode too. Love to hear your feedback on this one. Uh, you can also find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merch. Pick up new Capes and Lunatics merch. Yes, get your new merch. Get all the new swag with the new logos and the classic stuff. That's right, old stuff. Classic stuff is on there too. Uh, and again, if you want to be very generous and just give us money for no reason, there is a Cash App link on there. So, yes, Rain ran the money on us. Make it rain. Uh, pretend we're uh, that young girl dancing her way through the 21st and 31st centuries. She looks like she was just working a f***ing stripper pole down at Divas. Put your <laughs> hips into it when you f- uh, <laughs> use your powers, kid. Uh, and again, uh, the Patreon, where, again, you get something different. Bonus content exclusively to you, the Patreon elite, like Justin over here. Yes, join me in the Patreon Elite. You get all the uncensored Lilith Hellfire you could ever want. And access to all of the Capes and Lunatics archives. That's right. Including the worst superhero movie brackets. Which included some topless videos of one of our hosts. So we'll just leave it at that. (laughs) We're not going to tell you which one. We're just going to leave it at that. That's right! (laughs) (laughs) Oh. <laughs> all right. So find it all on the one place. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. Uh, uh, More vicious and brutal than ever. You know, so, so someone doing their best uh, topless uh, Charlie 27 impression on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a reason that they share the same name. Oh, that's right. That's right. All right. Now for this Just in the Isle, the, the king of podcasting, the one who knows. <laughs> Uh, you can find him at Killers here every week on Marvel Tales, uh, discussing something Marvel once a month on X Men Classics with me, where we talk a new X, uh, well, something classic from the X Men universe, uh, like Extinction Agenda, which is uh, proving very popular. Uh, yes, Runaway Success. <laughs> yes. Also, once a month on uh, Energon Universe with uh, me and a certain uh, hillbilly talking all the new <laughs> G.I. Joe and Transformers coming out of Image right now. Howdy, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look at our wrecking ball testicles. <laughs> all right. So, and you can also catch Justin at least once a month on We Are The Night. <gasps> the, the Batman, Batman podcast. podcast. Where we talk that blonde biscuit, Asriel. Uh, but that is not the only place is this man podcast. So where else uh, can they catch you? They can also catch me on three other shows a month. Gamma Charge, the strongest Marvel podcast there is. Got to rub that one in. Is, <laughs> is me and Russell every month discussing the Incredible Hulk and the Sensational She-Hulk. We also have Patreon, so do check that out. And we are also joined every month by the High Priest of Conchu himself, Ray, to discuss the Predator in Predator and Prey, the Yaucha podcast. And we are very much excited about the upcoming Predator versus Black Panther coming from Marvel later this summer. And last but not least, the Lost Library of Legends, my, sh my solo show dedicated to the uh, lost and forgotten comic book series of the past few decades is still going on and by the time that this episode comes out i will have a retrospective on an image comic series from 1993 called wild star going back to the 90s here bitch <laughs> uh. Ooh, hold on, let me grab a handful of this <laughs> don't shock the monkey <laughs> Uh, well, uh, that escalated. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a guy with a powerful rod. And again, make sure you just subscribe to that Patreon for those topless Charlie videos. My knockers That's right. are fully frosted. <laughs> My knockers are fully frosted. Uncensored. Oh, oh God. I, I need to work some of those in the rotation more again because he had some good ones. Because it yeah. was, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My favorite was you've got to give your wife something. Oh, uh, yeah, give your wife something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where is that? Uh, hey, we're doing me now. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> give your wife something. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to make you listen to all this, Luke. Give your wife something. <laughs> I like gorillas, and I won't apologize for it. <laughs> I'm that kind of freak. Like the penis. <laughs> in the butt is fine. <laughs> That's an interesting artistic choice. Oh, I'm going to wear a gimp mask and murder people. <laughs> Everyone loves cocaine. Uh, Boy, yeah. Uh, all right, kid. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm enough to, for AI to do, work some magic. All right. <laughs> again thank you for joining us again come back next week and celebrate our country the sentinel of liberty sentinel of liberty oh that's it another one we're going to cover one cap when they're trying to get cap to run for president oh <laughs> <laughs> Put out the election like special. All <laughs> right, come back next time and remember, uh, throw your hips into it. <laughs>